guessing that as you've started seeing a few more people, that people have been asking you, how are you? This is such a loaded question for me because I strive to be a person who's real. So what I sometimes wanna say when someone asks how I am is I'm both. I'm good and I'm a mess. I'm fine and I wanna hide under the covers. I love my life and sometimes I wanna throw my kids out the window. I am so grateful I am a person who others trust enough to hold their pain and it's a lot to hold. I love so many things about myself and I wanna change so many things about myself. I'm good at my job and I'm often running late. I got a lot done this morning and I'm wearing this hat because taking a shower wasn't one of the things that I got done. Sometimes I feel like I'm on a mountain and sometimes it's not just a valley that I'm in, but rather it's a hole. I'm a paradox. It doesn't have to be that I'm fine or I'm not fine. I and you can be both. When I have this feeling of both and, I oftentimes think about the verse from Philippians where Paul talks about being content no matter his situation. He writes, I am not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need and what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. I believe that God gives us strength and I believe that sometimes we have to ask for help. It's a paradox, it's both. In her book, Almost Everything Notes on Hope, Anne Lamott says, I believe both that we are doomed and that life is a magical, mysterious gift. It doesn't have to be either or. She talks about the medieval German mystic Meister Eckhart when he says that if the soul could have known God without the world, God would have never had to have created the world. Paradox is an invitation to know the world, both the sublime and the crazy, to know the soul of your own cranky self and to know the beautiful. One of the passengers on the famous U.S. Airway Flight 1549 that crash landed in the Hudson River was asked afterwards how he felt. He said, I was alive before and now I'm really alive. You see, this is the invitation. At the same time, there are times in our life where we won't be able to accept the invitation where we can't say yes to living that aliveness. We want to, but it's a paradox and we won't be able to move out of the slump. We want to say yes to joy, but we won't be able to. But we can be both. We can love God and we can know that God will give us strength, but not strength to get better, strength not to push through, but God will give us strength to ask for help. Whether it's the help of a professional or an AA group, or your pastor. Help helps you see the paradox that you are a child of God and sometimes you can't keep doing it the way that you've been doing it. She ends her chapter in this way. How can we celebrate paradox, let alone manage it all? Knowing how the scary future may be that your family will grow and might ignore you or hurt you or break your heart? that you may die after an unattractive decline or that we might bomb North Korea later today. We remember because truth is paradox. Something beautiful is also going on. So while trusting that and waiting for revelation, we do the next right thing. We tell the truth, we march, we make dinner, we have rummage sales for relief funds. Whoever arranges such things keeps distracting us and shifting us so that we don't get stuck in hopelessness. We can take one loud, disengaging step back into the paradox of hope because we remember that mustard seeds, that the littlest things will have the greatest results. We do the smallest, realest, most human thing. We water that which is dry. The church emergency number is 406-333-1856 because your mental health matters.